and a good morning, good afternoon, and a very good evening to you, the good people of the tube. Hope today, hope you're feeling grand and always when your world. Hello there, everybody. Um, welcome to A and Q Wednesday. Can't call it Q and A Wednesday because I get copyright flagged. <gasps> Moving. Uh, question one, everybody, is uh, how do you set up a flanger effect so you don't lose the guitar? And is there a specific pedal order? And you also spoke about, you know. Uh, should you run flange through one amp and then a clean sound through the other? When it comes down to that effect, I barely ever use that. Because I find, to be honest with you, a chorus to be better than, than flange. I mean, you can do some really cool things with flanging. Like, if you put it on to kind of like vocals and drums, it sounds amazing. But personally, I don't really particularly even like it on a guitar. It, it's it's cool. It's really cool. Especially when it goes crazy and you max out and it just sounds weird and it sounds like Jacko Pistorius when he's doing these boom weird things on his bass. But um, it's not an effect I would ever kind of really go for. But if you were to set it up, I mean, how would you how would you lose not lose the guitar? You just got to be really careful with the mix. It can be a quite dominating effect, definitely. Um, it, it's like, you know, it's like a super strong, I've always seen flanger as like, to me, it's like a super strong chorus. Like, you know, like chorus just sits in your guitar sound. It becomes your guitar sound, if, if you will. You know what I mean? Chorus does that. Uh, delay does that. Uh, vibrato does that. Uh, even the step filter, in a way, becomes your guitar, you know, becomes kind of part of your guitar tone. Flange, I've always kind of felt kind of like, it's just this big, obnoxious noise which is one of the reasons I don't really like it or even use it I mean it's slow if you have a rate really slow and it just kind of like pulses it's really nice but it's not an effect I would ever really use uh, so maybe I'm not maybe I'm not gonna be able to answer this question but I, mean, I just if so you don't lose a guitar I'll just be aware of the mix I don't I would always run the mix 50 50 you know what I mean 50 kind of like clean signal and 50% the effect because I, I, it can become a bit, I don't want to say over the top, but dominating. That's the word I'm after. It can become quite dominating quite quickly, that, that flange effect. It really can kind of swallow. And I kind of don't understand what you mean. It kind of swallows the guitar. Um, you've got to be careful of how much you mix in of, that, uh, of the effect. But um, is there a specific pedal order? I mean, I would always run that at... The amp side, if you know what I mean. I, I see things backwards. Um, I can't see it any other way. It's like... Uh... So if you were to run like from your guitar, say into... Say from your guitar you go into a fuzz, then you go to a wah, then you go to a distortion, then you go to an overdrive, then maybe a delay. And then I would run a f basically a flash. So, so basically from the amp into the flanger pedal. Uh, that's where I would run that personally. I would never run it anywhere else. I would always have it have it quite at the beginning end chain. I'm so confused now. I don't even remember which way round it is. So I'm just going to say that end as you're looking at your pedal board. <laughs> Closest to the amp. That's all I can say. I don't actually know. Um, I'm so confused by the whole kind of this way round, that way round kind of thing. I just know what works for me and that's all I can figure it out really. I'm too stupid to do anything else. So, um, so anyway, where were we? So, um, so yeah, I mean, how do you set it up? Just be careful of the mix of it, really. I mean, the rate and the speed of a thing and, and the intensity of the thing is, is fine, but it's how you mix it in with your guitar's original signal you've got to be careful of because, it, yeah, like you say, it can become very dominating. One second, everybody. Interesting. No, sorry. I got, I got distracted by something. I thought it was something and it wasn't. Anyway. <sighs> oh, a squirrel. Anyway, moving on. Um, in the house, Dave. Yes. Anyway, uh, where are we? Yeah, so that's where I would run it. I wouldn't I wouldn't run it into one amp and then have the other amp clean and this kind of thing. I wouldn't do that. I'd just have it at the beginning of the chain, end of the chain. Yeah, uh, that, that way. I would have it that way, not that way. Um, but like I said, I mean, I, I personally think Chorus is a better effect than flange, and I think vibrato is a better effect, and and a uni vibe uh, effect is better, and and also even even to an extent, kind of like 
like those Leslie Rotary speaker kind of effects, like, you know, that kind of warbly thing. I would, I would pick them over a flat. I Flange, if I was to use that effect, I'd probably use it on drums or vocals. I don't know if I'd ever really want to use it on guitar. The only time I've ever used it on guitar is twice in my life. I have used it... Um, I used it when I play... I use it, sorry, when I play This Is The Place by Red Hot Chili Peppers because John in that song ran a chorus and a flanger together to get that kind of really cool sound. It's slightly different... So I always, I when I play that song, I always run uh, the flange and the chorus together. Uh, and the other time I used flange, it was when I was at college and we were covering a, a Manu Chow song. And uh, I wanted a different kind of guitar sound, totally different weirdo guitar sound that stuck out from just kind of anything normal. So I just cranked, uh, I used the, I used the flanger effect on that on that song. And other than that, that's the two times I've ever used it. <laughs> It's just not an effect I would ever really go to. Like I said, I always find chorus or vibrato or univibe or, or anything like that works better for me. Or rotary speaker effects, yeah. I've never found that I really particularly like the flanger effect. It, it kind of... Um, it works, but I never really use it, if that makes any sense. I don't know. But yeah, anyway, I hope there's something in there. Uh, people of the tube, uh, if you can help me out here, it would be a great help. So... Um, if you're a big kind of like flanger pedal user of that sound, how do you set it up and what is the key to kind of like, you know, not having your guitar swallowed by the monster? So, um, so yeah, uh, people of YouTube, help us out if you can. Uh, leave comments in the comment section below. Where else would they leave them, Dave? Silly Dave. Okay, I'm going to sneeze. That's not good. Don't sneeze. I'll hold that until later. I'll save it till later. Okay, so, um, <laughs> question two. You're an idiot. Okay, so question two is... Uh, this is a question that I have answered <clears throat> a lot. But I'll answer it again. And I will say I have very I have videos on this. So if you want a bit more detail than what I'm going to go into here, I have videos talking about this. But question two is how do you have your guitar set up in terms of string height and pickup height? Okay, so pickup height depends on the guitar. If it's a Strat style guitar, I have the pickup super low. Like, super, super low. Give you an idea. Ugh. If I can, sh I don't know if you'll be, I don't know how well you'll be able to see this, but um, this is my glorious, gorgeous Tokai. But, ugh. right, okay. So, I don't know how well you'll be able to, oh, I don't think you can see that at all, but maybe you can. Um, so, hopefully, you're going to see. If I go to that, if, it, if you look at that bridge pickup, they're super low. I don't know how well you'll be able to see that because of the white light and the white scratch plate, but... Uh, ah, there we go. That's the way around. We have to do it, Dave. Well done. You're learning. So I hope you can kind of see. It's almost... Well, it is. It's pretty much flush on this side to the scratch plate. And then they kind of gradually raise up. And I always have them uh, angled as well. They're always angled towards the treble side. So that's how I have Stratocaster sell. No ifs, no buts. Excuse me. Unless you're the Battercaster... In which case the pickups have to be high because the body's so broken that I can't screw the pickups in. They have to be high because the body inside is like this, so you can't wind the pickups down onto that. <laughs> so the backcaster is the only strat I own, <clears throat> apart from another. So I own two strats with really high pickups. Other than that, the rest are like this. And the reason I like this is this I just find this works best for me. Uh, I, I always, I just, I like a cleaner sounding guitar. I don't like pickups really, really high on, on strats. So, let me put this back away. Loving this new guitar rack. Okay, so that's how I have strats pickups set. You know, really low on the bass side, really kind of higher on the bait, on the treble side. And I say they're all set up like that, even the Chapman actually, even the Chapman's, um, uh, Set up exactly the same. Les Pauls are slightly different, but I have my Les Pauls. They're all different. All my Les Pauls uh, pickup heights are all different. So the Revelation is my go-to Les Paul. This is my favourite Les Paul I have ever owned, and that weirdly enough includes my Gibson I used to own. This Revelation here is just my perfect Les Paul. 
It really is. It does It does exactly what I want it to do. It sounds the way I want it to do. And I just love the way it looks now. I've stripped the top off. So the pickups on the Revelation are quite low. You know, um, why don't I just show you? It's right there. Silly Dave. Okay, so, again, I hope you can kind of see. The the neck pickup actually sits below the housing. So that that's actually quite low. And the bridge pickup is just above, but only just above. I don't know how we're able to see that because of the light. But um, so these are quite low, and the reason for that is I this is where I found these to sound best um, on this guitar. Uh, if I'm in perfectly honest, I have, I have had them high, I've had them low, uh, and everywhere in between. And I've also done the Peter Green thing, which I'll get to in a sec. But this is where I found these pickups sound the best on this guitar for me. Um, I did have them at one point higher, and I really liked that, but it was too much output. I didn't like it. It kind of, I lost the character of the guitar because the pickups were too high. And I, and I feel that's an easy thing to do when you're kind of like uh, setting your pickup height. If they're too high, you can like lose the voice of your guitar. Like, you know, if they get too high, uh, the guitar's voice kind of like goes. It doesn't sound the same. It's really strange, really strange. Um, oh, actually, sorry, another, another, uh, going back to another strap. My 62 isn't set up like my others either. It's slightly different, but that's because the screws on the pickups are really short, so they have the, they're the lowest I can get them without replacing all the pickup screws, which I'm not gonna do. Um, but maybe I'll, I'll, I'll show you another day on that one. Um, but yeah, the Revelation has fairly low pickups because that's where its voice lives, if you know what I mean. So, moving along, I'll, I'm, I'm going to do a video on this soon and show you the variation. Get in there. <laughs> he says, oh, I love this guitar rack, and then he doesn't hold the guitar. Okay, so, Lemon Drop. So, this is where things get a little bit different. I don't know how well you'll be able to see these, but that's weird. Okay, so what's going on here is because this is my Peter Green Les Paul, you know, they're angled like Peter Green. Peter Green sunk the bass side, sunk it right into the pickup uh, cover and boosted the treble side all the way up. So you get that. And I'm going to do a video on this soon and why when you're trying to play like Peter Green, that's so important because it really is so important. So that's how my lemon drop set up uh, pickup wise. Um, and then we get to the epi. And the epiphone is just kind of set up neutrally. Um, in all fairness, I don't remember the last time I actually changed the height on these pickups. Uh, they've always been... Since I had this guitar, they've always been the same kind of thing. I've never been super high, they've never been super low. So the neck pickup is just flush with the, uh, the pickups around. Maybe a smidge... No, it's flush. Uh, and the bridge pickup is about a millimetre, two millimetres above the pickup surround, and that's about it. So, as for string, well, and that's that. Um, is there any other guitars I own? My Oswald Telly, there's another one. The Telecasters. Now, Telecasters are a bit of a weird thing for me, because I always like Telecasters to have more bite and output than any other guitar. So whereas my Strats, I always have super, super low pickups. My Les Pauls vary depending on what I'm after with them. Uh, the 335, the Hartwood 335, uh, its humbuckers are low. They're, they're the same as the Epiphone, actually. They're kind of neutral. Um, any other guitars I can mention? Not, not, that, that is not that it's so ridiculously weird. So the Jag, I suppose. The Jag's kind of, the, the Jag's pickups are sunk as well. I sync the pickups in my Jaguar. Um, that's set more like a Strat. The Jaguar set more like a Strat. So my Telecaster, like I said, I like high output Telecasters. Don't ask me why, I don't know. There's something in the sound when the, of a Telecaster when the pickups are high, but only on the treble side, that I really like. So uh, in the close-up video of my Oswald Telly I did the other day, you, you should be able, uh, hopefully was that you was able to see the the bridge pickup and the neck pickup are angled quite drastically. Um, not as drastically as the Peter Green, but close. You know what I mean? And I like that because 
to me, that's where the telly lies, like sound lies, especially my Oswald. It, it, it sings more there. It sounds like a the telly I want. You know what I mean? Like the telly sound I have in my head. That's that's how I that's how I got it. And I, I did experiment a long time. I mean, I've, um, when I first got the Oswald, no, sorry, it wasn't the Oswald. When I first got the Revelation, it was the Revelation. It was a revelation. Um, I would experiment with pickup heights on that, and I, that was when I discovered that I liked the pickups on a Telecaster really well, quite high, near enough on the treble on the treble side, near enough touching the string, you know, just so it's not basically, but you know what I mean, really super close. And so when I got the Oswald, I immediately did that stagger, and I haven't changed it since the day I got it because that was the. <laughs> Sorry about that. I got distracted. Probably looked scared. Got rabbit in the headlights. What was that? Oswald Telly. Yes. So angle of pickups. Like I angle, that was immediately the first thing I did, and it hasn't changed since. And I, I just like that in a Telecaster. And I think it comes back to working at Old Hat as well, because when I was at Old Hat, all the Telecasters we had were set up that way. They were, they always had really high pickups. You know what I mean? None of the pickups were low, uh, and it mainly came from like Norman and John, the guy, the, the guys. Uh, Norman was the owner, and John was the guy who worked with me in the shop. Um, they come from the time when you would wind the pickups really high to get as much output from your guitar as you possibly could because you had no pedals to do it. You had an amp and you had to plug into it to get distortion. You had to have your pickups high and the amp loud. So I think that's where it comes from. And I found there that I like pickups high on the Telecaster. Um, funny enough, if I wind the pickups up on a Strat, I don't particularly like it. Apart from the Battercaster, the Battercaster sounds good, but I think it's because it's got weak pickups anyway. So they kind of it kind of balances out. But, um, I don't know. But, yeah, I mean, so that's, that's pickup height varies. Stratocaster's not really. I mean, uh, that set of the same, that set of the same. This is kind of like Dave standard, Dave standard, Dave standard, Dave standard. Uh, all the other strats in this room are pretty, well, yeah, they are set up all the same. I can see it. Uh, and all the guitars upstairs are set up the same, apart from the 62, which is slightly different. But we, that's because of the screws on the on the pickups. Uh, so they're all slightly different, but they all kind of have a, a certain thing. All my, I think my three Les Pauls are the weirdest ones because it's they're all all three of them are different and they all sound different and they all behave differently because of the, the, the pickup height, so to say. The Revelation and the Epiphone aren't too far off each other, but they are. And the Epiphone sounds really dark and and woolly, whereas the whereas the the Revelation sounds like a Telecaster on steroids. Which again is exactly what I want from a Les Paul. Um, I'll always be, I'll, I'll always love that guitar. I will always love the RTLs, the fifty nine, and I really didn't think I would, and I am just so impressed with that guitar. Anyway, shut up, Dave. Um, so pick up, that's pick up height. So pick up height is is what it is. Uh, string height varies guitar to guitar. Um, I always have them set up in the exact same pattern. Which is uh, E A D G B E. High E is the highest on the board as you look down at the strings. Um, I did a close up video of my Red Oswald where you can see how I've got the string set up. I was able to kind of refocus it using the phone. So, um, so yeah, so string height varies from guitar to guitar, but it's always the same kind of pattern, especially on Fender style guitars. On Les Pauls, because you've got the, the tunematic bridge. Uh, it's, it is what it is. You know what I mean? It, uh, but I always tend to have the treble side, the, the G, B and E side, side wound up a little bit higher than the E, A and D side on the Les Paul or the 335 or, or the SGs I used to have or, or any of those kind of, you know, tunematic style bridges. I always have it kind of angled. So um, just to give me a little bit more height. But again, because of the stagger of the, of the thingies, that's the way it is. Uh, but any Fender style guitar... They're all that way, but height-wise, they all diff. They all differ. So, the height of the Tokai is different to the height of the Hondo. The Hondo is different to the Backcaster. The Backcaster is different to the Red Strat. The the the, the Red Strat is different to the Chapman. You know, the the Chapman is different to the the Jimi Hendrix Strat, and and so on. You get the idea. They're all different. They're all set up so they work for that guitar. Uh, because all guitar play differently, like uh, all guitar necks are different and you have to adjust the strings to the guitar neck so it feels right. You can't, it's one thing I've learned is you can't have a homogenous 
one setting for your strings on every guitar. Every guitar requires a different string height because of the neck thickness and just the way the guitar wants to sing. Uh, certain guitars will like a higher action. Certain guitars will like a lower action. Certain guitars like a medium action. You know what I mean? It varies. Um, my Epiphone, as soon as you, it's weird. As soon as you crank the height, string height on the Epiphone Les Paul, it sounds like somebody's it's like, hey! and it just sounds really dark and woolly and it loses character the lower you have the action on that guitar the better it sounds uh, and I've tried high action with the pickups raised up that didn't work um, but the Epiphone because and especially with the gauge 7s on it now <laughs> there is like no action on that thing it's like which is why I, in a bizarre turn it's actually quite difficult for me to play because I'm not used to playing such a low action guitar and I don't play the Epiphone a great deal anyway. I do now because it's got awesome gauge 7s on it but um, and they're never coming off. When I break them, I'm going to get some more. But um, but yeah, so pickup height, string, stri pick up heights are kind of homogenous depending on what the guitar is apart from what that's pulls. String height varies guitar to guitar. Y you know, you can't have like, you know, oh, it's uh, 0 0.5 millimeters on this side and whatever, you know. I, I don't, I reckon you've got to set up guitar to guitar because every guitar is different. So you can't really be like, you know, I'm going to have this guitar set up with the same string height. I've tried that. It doesn't work. Um, so you just got to kind of like set up each guitar to what that guitar wants. And the guitar will tell you anyway. When you, when you start playing it, it'll be like, you know, it'll tell you through its sound of what it wants, it, what it, where, where and what it wants to be, if that makes any sense whatsoever. But like, if you're playing a guitar and it's like, it feels, you know, it's not responding. It's because it's not right. You need to try a different setup kind of thing. And that's why I think it's really important to kind of like um, do your own setups because, and I reckon it's fun personally. I really enjoy it. Uh, apart from when the guitar doesn't play ball, but um, I really enjoy setting up guitars and just kind of finding out where they want to be. You know what I mean? If that makes any sense. Like, you know, if, you, if you're adjusting... Uh, the string height and then pick up height and just finding where it where it belongs you know what I mean it, it's really really key I've never really had much of an issue with many Stratocasters with pick up height but string height definitely um, but yeah so um, so yeah anyway that's that's kind of uh, that's kind of how I have my guitar set up uh, I do have videos on this uh, all over I think I've got like two or three I forget how many I've got but I've answered this quite a few times but I thought I'd bring it up again just because um and like I say, I do want to do a video soon of why that P Peter Green pickup stagger is so important. Uh, I'm going to do it under the Peter Green series. And also we're going to look into his sound with the Zoom G5 as well at some point soon. And again, I think I'll do that as part of the series and try and kind of like just explain a few things if I can. I'm, I'm not very good. At, I'm going to try and explain a few things that I want to explain about Peter's style that I'm going to try and understand if that makes any sense. So, um... So yes, so that's how I've got my guitar set up uh, in terms of string height and pickup height. Like I say, invariably they're, they're very, if it's Stratocaster, it's uh, kind of string height varies, but pickup height doesn't. They're normally very low. So, um, so I've got this question. Uh, moving on to question three is, uh, can, you, can you do a video vlog using a phone? Because uh, I get told, uh, I, I, you see a lot of people getting told off of poor quality, sound quality using a phone for videos. Well, funny enough, this is something I've started doing recently. With I did it with my close-up videos, and I did it when my when my laptops were totally out of date, and um, I had no ability to do videos as I'm doing them now with, with Mr. Zoom. Um, I had to use my phone, and I reckon you can get away with it. Pers not get away with it, that's, that's the wrong term, but... No, it is the right term. Yeah, of course you can go. Yeah, of course you can do it. Yeah, yeah, you can you can you can do videos on your phone because in all fairness, most phones these days film in HD. Mine does. I mean, my my films in HD. I mean, the sound quality. Yeah, I can understand that. Kind of like you know, the sound quality isn't as good as a really expensive camera. But the fact of the matter is, if you can't afford an a really expensive camera and a nice kind of like you know mic or 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 the, all that kind of gear, then this is perfect. And the really cool thing about doing videos, this is something that I, has been kind of a bit of a, again, a revelation for me, is 
doing videos with my phone, I was quite surprised of how good they looked and kind of sounded in a way. I mean, yeah, it doesn't sound as good as a Zoom when the cab's mic'd up with an SM57 and you know what I mean? It doesn't sound as good as that or as clear as that. But, you know what? I, I like it because the fact is, no matter where I am, I will always have my phone with me. So if I go somewhere and, I don't know, so let's just, let's just do a silly idea. If I, I, went, I went to, say, somebody's house for a party. Like, yeah, because you've got Friends Day. Uh, no, I'm joking. Um, whatever. Shut up. Why, have I, why do I do that to myself? Oh, I hate it. hate it. Stop it, Dave. Breathe. Okay, so yeah, but say I went to like somewhere and like, you know, I'm at a house or, or whatever and it's like, there's a 59 Gibson Les Paul in the corner. Oh yeah, that's my, you know, that's my dad's, you know, you can have a go on it if you want. You're like, oh, I ain't got, I ain't got my Zoom, I ain't got my Zoom camera, I can't film it, you know, I've got to document this thing. It's like, you've got that. You know what I mean? You've got, you've got a camera and it will pick it up pretty good. You know what I mean? Good enough. I mean, the thing is, it's like, the thing about sound quality in this day and age, people do get bent out of shape about, oh, it doesn't sound as you know as good as this, that, and the other. And, it's, and it's like, no, because it won't sound as good because some people don't have access to the certain things that some other people have. You know, it's like, you look at, I look at some YouTuber, guitar, guitar YouTubers, and look at their like home studio, and I'm like, oh my God, look at all the stuff they've got to record with. It's like, I've got an Mbox and Pro Tools, you know, <laughs> and a, SM58 and an SM57 and that's all I've got and, and it's like that their, their stuff is going to sound better than mine you know um, if somebody's going around with a really expensive microphone a really expensive recording software to record and film video they're going to sound better than the phone but the fact of the matter is it's not about the quality of the audio or the of, of, of the thing it's about what you're what you're filming you know what I mean and if the content is actually really good but it doesn't matter what it's filmed on I don't mind you know what I mean? It's like, I, I remember watching videos in the early days of YouTube that were like absolutely horrific, really, by today's standards. But the fact of the matter is, at least, it, you know, you got to see it. It's like, I've got um, video footage of the Chili Peppers at Don Valley Stadium uh, in 2006. Um, I didn't have a camera phone at that point. I had a Nokia something or another with a clip-on camera that you had to plug in that basically didn't even work. So I didn't really have, well, I kind of had a camera phone, but not really. I've still got it, actually, just because it's ridiculously cool. Um, but I didn't have that. And I don't even remember. I don't, I don't even think at that time I even had a phone. I think I was phoneless at that point in time. My brother had a very early camera phone, and we filmed some of the, some of the footage. And it sounds horrific. It's distorted. It's all grainy and pixely. But you can still understand what's going on. And I like that because it captures something. And, and the thing is, it's like, yeah, you look back at... Um, Robert Johnson's uh, recordings, you know, they're, they're scratchy and they, you know, they're, they're they're kind of not the best sound in the world. Or Sun House, or or Willie Dixon, or or any of these guys, and or you know, BB King, even the early stuff, and and John Lee Hooker, they're not the best audio quality. But it's not about that. It's about the content of what it actually is. You know what I mean? And that's the point. So quality be damned sometimes, you know what I mean? Sometimes I reckon the better quality doesn't necessarily mean it's good, you know what I mean? It's, you know, it's like listening to some of these old 70s punk bands who recorded in their house, you know what I mean? Recorded their entire album in a kitchen, you know what I mean? And it's got such a character to it. And, I'm, and, I, and I, I do kind of believe that that kind of comes across when you use something like a phone to do a video, is it, it has a character. Like the other day when, um. The other day, actually, is the first time I watched back a video on my lap on my computer. Um, thanks, Jay. Um, of the close-up video of the Telecaster, I wanted to see what it looked like. I haven't watched back any video I've ever done on my phone. I've never watched it back. The Telecaster was the first one I watched back just to see what it actually looked like, and I was quite, I was pleasantly surprised. I was like, wicked, and it gave me a confidence to go no matter where I am. I don't feel like I can't capture anything anymore. You know what I mean? If I, oh, I, I really wish I could film this, but I don't have my Zoom camera and I can't do it. It's like, nope, we're going to do this. You know what I mean? So yes, yes, of course you can get away with using your phone for doing like a vlog or anything. You know what I mean? If, if this is all you've got, then go for it. If people want to moan about the sound quality being not good enough, then let them. 
the end of the day, it doesn't matter. If that's all you've got and that's all you've got access to and that's all you can afford, then that's that's enough. You know what I mean? It's like we can't all afford expensive cameras and microphones and, and editing software and and home studios and all this kind of thing. We can't all afford to do that kind of thing. You know what I mean? We can't. So we have to make do with what we've got. We are limited by what we can do. But that makes for some really cool things sometimes. I think it was John Lennon who said like limitation breeds innovation because if you don't have it, you have to make what you've got work for you. And I like that. And it creates an individuality because uh, you do what you, you only do what you can do. You know what I mean? It's like my song, I mean, a lot of people remark on my songs that I record upstairs. I mean, you know, people say, oh, it doesn't, you know, it needs better mix and it, it needs this and that. Other. I don't doubt it. I know it does. But the fact of the matter is, I don't have access to a high quality studio. You know, I mean, I, I, like I said, I have an Mbox, I have Pro Tools, and it's not the high quality version of Pro Tools. It's really old and out of date. Uh, it's got very little, it's got like little plugins. It's like, it's got, I've got one reverb and I've only got a few little plugins on it. Um, and I'm very limited to what I can achieve with that. And also I'm running through these little speakers are about six inch speakers and that's what I'm using to mix. But in doing that, those songs have their own little character. And I like that because they, they yes, they don't sound as pearly kingy as like a highly produced album would. And that would probably bring them to life even more if I, you know, if I got John Joe to play drums on them and uh, they were all nicely polished, you know what I mean? But I don't have the access to that at this point in time. I don't, I don't have, I don't have the ability to, well, with everything that's going on as well, I don't have the ability to get into a studio. And even if I did get into, have the ability to get into a studio, I don't, I can't afford to. You know what I mean? And so when people, when you say like, you know, is it, a, can I get away with doing like a video vlog or anything using a phone, of course you can. Yes, no problem. You know, of course, of course you can. Uh, because like I said, it's not necessarily always about the content, it's about what you're videoing that people wanna see. I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's loads of videos out there on YouTube that are filmed with phones that you might not even realize. Uh, Phil X, I remember Phil X said, uh, he did a music video, for, he filmed everything on his iPhone and edited it together on his iPhone and put it out Onto YouTube, onto YouTube, just using his iPhone. And people were saying, how did you film this and that? And it must have been amazing. And he was just using his iPhone. And it's like, that's the point. You know, everybody has a camera. Everyone has the ability to set up a YouTube channel and start filming themselves or filming what they do with this. And you can see one of most cameras these days, like I say, record in HD. You know what I mean? Either 720 or 10, 1080. You know what I mean? Even newer phones record even higher than that. And I would like to get an, like a... a I love taking pictures and videoing things. Like, you know what I mean? I, I, I love taking pictures is one of those things that I really enjoy doing. I like kind of photography. I'm not great at it, but I really enjoy taking pictures. Like when I take a picture for a song, I really like to kind of like get in there and edit the picture and, and make it look the way I kind of perceive it will fit the song, if that makes any sense. And um, I really enjoy that. But, but and, and the thing, I, I just do it with this and it, it works fine. And, um, so yeah, no problem at all. Yeah, you can easily get away with doing videos on that. And like I say, we don't all have access. We don't all have the funds to be able to afford really expensive camera gear or audio editing software and, and video editing stuff. You know, we a lot of us will be able to afford like a, a phone and and that's all we've got. And is that good enough? Yeah, of course it is. Of course it is. It's fine. You know what I mean? Uh, if, if people spit their dummies about sound quality... Just explain to them what you're what you're working with, and if they if they spit their dummy about out about that, then you just delete. You know what I mean? Just get rid of them because they're not helpful. They're just there to troll you, and that in which case you don't want to listen to them anyway. So you know it's all about what you're filming, and if it's interesting enough, you know you know people will watch it, and that's the point. You know what I mean? And there's so many interesting things you can capture at a moment's notice. It's it's quite incredible, really. Anyway. And I say, everyone's got a phone. So you can always film something. It's really, really cool. So, yes, of course you can use your phone to do a vlog or anything like that. You know, sound quality is good enough. You know what I mean? Um, the one thing it doesn't pick up is loud, but it because it compresses. Phones compress really badly. Like the other day, the only thing that really bugged me about the Telecaster video was it didn't pick up the dynamics as well uh, through the, of the Fender amp that, that I wish it had done. When I really tried hitting the Tele through the Fender amp, it got really loud and the sound bloomed. Uh, the camera didn't catch that because obviously, you know, it, it compressed the sound and it just kind of all stayed kind of like one level, which is fine. 
because uh, it still captured the sound. You know what I mean? It, it just sounded really compressed, but that's fine. You know what I mean? At least it captured it. You know what I mean? Which is so much more important than not capturing it. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It didn't capture the volume jump or the blooming bit of the, the thing, but it captured it nonetheless, and that's the point. So yes, of course you can use your your phone, no problem at all. I, I said I'm going to probably be using my phone more often as well to, to use to to get like videos that I might be out and about. I might go to a guitar shop and go, oh, might might have a bit of a film, or I might be out and about somewhere and and film something here and there. You know what I mean? And I'm going to start using my phone a bit more to upload videos because. Um, I was unpleasantly surprised by it, and like I say, I mean, uh, people have I like your feedback as well. The phone videos, uh, what do you think to them, like quality-wise? You know, just like you know, are they, are, you know, are they, are they good enough? You know, what I mean, because I, I was actually quite unpleasantly surprised, but um, I'd like to hear your input on it as well, people of YouTube. Let me know in the comments section below. Um, so yeah, anyway, hope I answered your question. I'm going to move on to question four because I'm going to run out of time if I'm not careful. Okay, so question four. I'm going to do a video on this uh, next Monday. Uh, and we'll put it to this. It's actually a really interesting thing, actually. I've never done, but it'd be quite interesting. So your question four is main strengths of a Fender Jaguar in comparisons to a Fender Strat. Uh, and when would you use a Jaguar instead of a Strat? And does it inspire you differently? The Jag, yeah, to, to answer that last one, yeah, the Jag does inspire you differently. You play differently with a Jaguar because of the scale length and the way the guitar is uh, ergonomically set out and stuff like that and the way it feels with the short scale neck um you play differently with a jaguar uh i think the jaguar is actually an easier guitar to play than the stratocaster uh it's one of the easiest guitars to play i think in the world like it's a big body but i would always a, a jaguar would be perfect for beginners you know what i mean it's a really good beginner guitar um strengths of a jaguar comparison to a strat I don't know about that because I feel they're both on par because the Jag, they're kind of, yeah, they are on par. I can't really think they're kind of on par there. The Jag has a weak, has the fundamental weakness of the bridge. The strap doesn't have that. Um, but that can be neither here nor there if you get the bridge right, you know what I mean? And there are ways to do that, Mustang bridges, there's the other bridges you can get for Jaguars and Jazz Masters these days, but just solve that issue, so that's no longer really an issue. Um, I personally really like the original bridges on Jaguars, and I like the way it makes me play different, because I know I have to, I can't hit it as hard, but you, you can, but you can't, it's weird. Um, but yeah, so, yeah, I don't know. And when would you use a Jag instead of a Strat? I don't know. I mean, it just depends on how it feels. I mean, a Jag, Jag I don't think a Jag has much as has as much sustain as a Stratocaster. It, the notes die off quickly on a Jaguar. Like if it's ding, you know, they they they, they plink. Whereas a Strat does sing more, but a Jag can sing as well. I don't know. This is really hard because you're talking about my two favorite guitars ever made. Um, Um, let me use a Jag instead of a Strat. I don't know. I mean, I did an I did a little mini album the other day, and the Jaguar was just used on every song. I was led in that direction. I had to use the Jag. It just felt right. And my white Jaguar never has hasn't got music in it. It's full of music. That guitar. It's 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 such an inspiring guitar. Um, It's just when when you feel like you want to use a Jag instead of a, a Strat or something like that. It's just a feel thing. It just have to. It would have to come down to how you feel. Yeah, you know I mean, you couldn't just like you know. Oh, I want to. You know, oh, that's a very specific sound. If you, I suppose, if you're doing like a surfy. I well, saying that you could use a Strat as well. Um, this is hard work. Um, like I said, I'm gonna do a video on this uh, next Monday. We're gonna. We're gonna put my jag against uh, my my white jag against my white strat, and we'll just just have a listen. I mean, the strat's got more sounds. The jaguar has technic the, the jaguar's technically got technically got more, but not really, because on the jaguar you've got the bridge pickup, you've got the bridge and neck, and then you've got the neck, 
And then you've got those three positions again with the high pass filter. Um, so that's, you know, six sounds. And then you've got the, the jazz circuit, which is seven, uh, not including toned down positions and stuff like that. But the fact that, you know, if you've got a strap with a five way switch, you know, you've got those five sounds. And again, varying degrees of tone. So you've got different sounds as well. So, wow. Um, yeah. I don't know. They do sound differently, Jags to Stratocasters, but I think they are very close to each other. And like I say, somebody asked me once, like, if you couldn't play Stratocasters ever again, what would be the guitar you would play? It'd be a Jaguar. No ifs, no buts. Easy. Easy answer. Because it's just, it feels the same. It, they feel the same. Uh, even with the short scale and different string tension and, and, and the bigger body... Jaguars just feel like I'm at home. Um, I adore them. They're, they're just wicked. They're just absolutely wicked. I still remember my my brother was the first one who got a, uh, he got a Fender Japanese Jag. It was like a '60s reissue. It was amazing. Uh, sad if you don't have that anymore, but yeah, that was amazing. And when I got the Squire, I was just like, oh, where have you been all my life? <laughs> um, yeah, so. Strengths of a Jag comparison to a Strat. I reckon they're on par. When would you use a Jag instead of a Strat? Ugh, when you feel like it. You would have to go and feel and what the song wants of you. Uh, because Jaguars do sound different to a Strat. Uh, they sustain differently. They sing different. So it does have to be dependent on the song. Um, and does it inspire you differently? Yes and no. You know what I mean? Yes and no. All guitars bring out different things. You know what I mean? Like, um, there are guitars here that kind of like this constant, str like they're all full of music. The Tokai, the Hondo here and stuff like that. They're up there full of music, whereas certain other guitars, like, like, like say the Epiphone Les Paul, for instance, it's not got a lot in it. You know what I mean? To be honest with you, when I pick it up and play it, I'm just kind of like, it doesn't really do a great deal. Whereas if I go to Revelation, it all of a sudden, like, oh, I've got a load of ideas. You know what I mean? It's it's, it's weird. Every guitar will inspire you in a different way. So a Jaguar to a Strat, yeah, it's going to inspire different things. And also the way the Jag lays out and the way the sound speaks to you and, and, and this, that, and the other. But again, it's all to, it all comes down to feel. You know, if you approach it from a technical standpoint, I don't think it's going to work as well. You know, it's just kind of like, you know, you, and especially when you're recording a song, you have, you have to kind of like, understand what the song wants and what can you use to to give it what it wants if that makes any sense i don't know the other day when i did a little mini album thing of six songs it was it was like you know i didn't i'd used i'd just used the jag i didn't use anything else but the jag and when i when dukes deluda were a thing i, I used the jag pretty much throughout that i mean I, I recorded the entirety of the dukes deluda album apart from one song with with the jaguar um which is weird because I took my white strap with me and the Oswald strap, which I was brand new at the time, which I used for overdubs only uh, on one song. And uh, the Jag was the only guitar that seemed to just work in the studio. And that, in all fairness, I still think that my Jaguar is probably the best recording guitar I have. Uh, every time I record with the Jaguar, I don't, do, I don't have to do anything to the sound of it. It just sounds perfect. With a Strat, I have to alter it slightly with the low end. With a Les Paul, I drastically have to alter the low end and stuff like that. With a Jaguar, it's like, it just sits. It's, it's, I would say the Jaguar is probably the best recording guitar I have just because of how, how good it sounds when you record it. Um, it's just ridiculous. I don't know why. I don't know why. It just, it just is that way. But uh, yeah. But I'm going to do a video on that because I'm curious. I want to kind of dive into that a bit more. So I'm not going to talk too much about it at this point in time, but we'll... We'll dive into it next Monday, and um, yeah, we'll just we'll run a few unscientific tests <laughs> and just see see what the difference is in sound. Because I'm curious actually. Reading reading your question this morning, when I was doodling it down a bit. Of paper, I was like, ah. interesting. So um, so yeah, so so to just, yeah, just to clarify, main strengths of a Jag comparison to a Strat. I would say they're on par with strengths. They're both ridiculously versatile guitars. Um, when would you use a Jag instead of a Strat? When it needed to be. 
uh, you know what I mean? If you play a, if you play a jag all the time, you know you use it all the time. If you play a strat all the time, you use it all the time. But there might be that occasion where you might need the voice of a jag over a strat or the voice of a strat over a jag. You know what I mean? It, it just it depends on what you're doing. And does it inspire you differently? Yes and no. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. It totally depends on the situation. And again, if you go by how you feel, it's normally the best way. So, um, so yeah, there we go. Um, is there anything else to add? No, there's nothing else to say. No, that's it. Like I said, we're going to dive into that next Monday. So, uh, yeah. There we go. Anyway, uh, so yeah, that's final question of the day. Um, hope you enjoyed the vid. Um, do anything else to say? Oh yeah, if you want to, if you want to submit a question for Q and A, uh, A and Q. Don't say Q and A, you'll get copyright flagged. Uh, a and Q Wednesday. Uh, description box below. Email link. Uh, just send me the questions there. I'm actually running out. Believe it or not, I've, I've nearly caught up with them all. So, um, which is. That's only ever happened twice. I don't know how many episodes of Q&A I've done. a and Q, uh, I've done, but it's only happened twice where I've nearly run out of questions. And I think I've got like maybe 10 or 11 uh, emails left. And I think a few of them are just like spam emails that say, like, you know, um, you were in an accident and you lost your leg and uh, you're, you're entitled for a massive settlement of 6 million space pounds. I don't know. Stupid emails, spam. Um, so yeah, so yeah, hope answers questions okay. Uh, like I said, yeah, please, uh, people of YouTube, let me know about the phone videos. I really want to know your input. What, do, you know, what, what do you think to them? Like you know, like that. But uh, also, the sound quality of when I when I'm because I've, I've uploaded quite a few videos with my phone recently with just kind of like noodling about. Uh, and it, it, they don't see yes, they don't sound as good as the SM57 and the Zoom Cam, but. Let me know. I want to know what your opinion is, people. Let me know in the comment section below. I really want to know your input because it'd be interesting to know. So, um, yeah, I'll see you again on Friday for another vid, everybody. Um, anything else to say? Submit questions to email. Nope, that's it. Um, also, hopefully doing an update video on the giveaway guitar uh, soon, if I can afford it. <laughs> So uh, also I've got something I've got something else coming as well on Thursday, which uh, probably talk about next week. But anyway, um, yeah, nothing else to talk about. So thank you very much indeed for watching, everybody. I'll see you again on Friday. Have a great morning, afternoon, good evening, and.